On the 24th of December, 1862, yeah, an audience gathered to watch a Christmas Eve showing of a new play adapted from a Charles Dickens book titled The Haunted Man. John Henry Pepper, remember this guy, replicated an idea first brought on by Henry Dirks. Once the audience had left the theater, they were all shocked. I don't have the footage of that day, but I do have this. April 15th, 2012, a hologram Tupac was unveiled at a Coachella show. It looked as real as if the man was standing in front of us for the first time in 15 years, 7 months, and 3 days since. So, in both instances, both audiences saw a literal ghost on stage, a hologram of a dead person. The method was called Pepper's Ghost, named after this guy that I told you to remember but you already forgot. Oh. You remember, huh? Really? Without going back, what was his name? Did you just answer? You know how pre-recorded videos work, right? Yeah. So how the hologram works is you would angle glass towards the audience in front of a dark background so the audience won't see the glass. Like this. Then you would shine a light on an actor below the stage. The light of the actor would reflect up onto the angled glass. In Tupac's case though, it was a completely CGI character played on screen. Pretty cool actually. What problem though? This isn't a hologram. Let's quickly ask Google what a hologram is. Okay, a three-dimensional image formed by the interference of light beams from a laser or other coherent light source. The key word here is three-dimensional. Is it two words? But it has a dash, Moss. Doesn't the dash make it one word? Otherwise, what's the point of the dash? But it sounds funny, you know? I'm out of English. <coughs> Sorry, I got a little sidetracked there. Three-dimensional. The issue here is the glass. The image of Tupac is projected onto a 2D surface. The glass. If you had to stand on the side of the glass, you ain't seen shit. There's another problem with this method. Apparently, it costs between 100000 to about $400,000 to produce this effect. So every time you'd like this non-hologram image to show to your friends, it would cost you a brand new McLaren each time. What if I told you Apple is working on something that'll make this even cheaper? How cheap, you ask? Completely free. If you guys hadn't noticed by now, I am a massive nerd. Yes, sometimes I sound like a scholar at location settler, but I'm actually more of a Steve Urkel kind of guy. <laughs> So, I want to talk about something I'm so fucking excited about. AR glasses. Everybody knows about VR, right? Facebook. <coughs> I mean meta, you know. Yeah, whatever. Just spend something like 3 billion trying to convince you that it's the new way. They really want us to live like Ready Player One. Did I say Steve Urkel? Nah, bruh. Let's take it down a notch. Look at this shit. Look at this sh I still want to leave the house, bro. Why someone would choose to live in a fake world, I will never understand. The fake world is a lot less painful than the real one. Shut your fucking mouth! Shut the fuck up, you cunt! Enter. AR. Now, the main difference between VR and AR is the fact that AR builds on what you already see with your naked eye. Here's an example. The car is actually there. It isn't a computer generated image of something that's not there. But once the screen is pointed into the car's direction, look at what happens. Welcome to the fucking future! So, I'm going to pause quickly right here and we're going to rewind when Grimm was still a young, young buck. His favorite cartoon on TV was hands down Dragon Ball Z. But it was the end of the Freezer Saga and since it was the end of the Freezer Saga and I had screamed more than enough to go Super Saiyan, <laughs> they played another Popeye in between, Yu-Gi-Oh. It's time to do 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 Now at first I was like, Pah. but I started to enjoy it. The basic premise is that these guys would use cars to battle magic animals in an arena. Super science fiction, right? First of all, you would have to have glass over an arena at an angle towards the whole crowd to see the shit, then project a magical animal from above the roof so that the image can be projected back onto the beach. Y'all see what I'm seeing here, right? AR fucking glasses! 
The reason why I'm so excited about the AR over the VR is simply because it's tech that can be used in everyday life. Take for instance the scene from Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, okay, uh, can you pull out my web shooter? Making a hologram of this would be so expensive as you would have to account for light, movement, materials, and a whole lot of other variables. But with the glasses, this scene becomes less science fiction and more science fact. <laughs> Did I do that? Oh, this scene from... Steffi? Hello, Pobby. What can I do for you? Watch Unappetizer. Unappetizer recommends deleting Meet Me, Sex Me, as you are now married. It also recommends deleting Where's the Movie App, as all movies are available on me. It recommends deleting Get Buff Quick, as you have clearly given up. Look man, it's one thing trying to cast this in the real world, but it makes so much more sense with AR glasses. Bruh, watch this next video. And if this video doesn't make you excited, you can switch off this fucking video. <laughs> Buen día, Emilio. ¿Qué puedo hacer por usted? ¿Qué está pasando? Mis puntos están bien. Welcome to the fucking future. So, what does Apple have to do with this? Well, remember a few years ago, Google had something called the Google Glass? If you're single, go out to a bar. Yeah. With some Google glasses on. Someone's gonna buy you a drink. Yeah. <laughs> no, we won't. No, we fucking won't. Anyway, one thing that we know is that Apple has always been secretive about Wait, everything that they make. So secretive, in fact, that the dope. software team had no idea what the hardware team was building when they made the first iPhone. So how do we know that Apple is making these glasses then? Well, in August of 2018, Apple brought Ar 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 this company. They literally make glasses for a living. But then, the year before that, they had bought another company. Vr -va vr -vr 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 yeah, ne? I, these gums are shooting me. So, they made this handset called the Totem, and the reason why you don't know it is because you are damn. No, I'm kidding. They just never dropped it. There's a whole lot of other companies that they bought, like Face Shit. That was on purpose. But the basic point is that you don't go around buying ice cream shops unless you're thinking about making ice cream. So, here's some stuff I was thinking about with AR implications. The first one is changing your appearance. I mean, think about it. With new phones these days, you can literally change your appearance on the fly. MKBHD explained it best here. So this Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra, when you open the selfie camera, has a beauty filter, but this isn't just facial smoothing, it literally lets you move your hairline, changes the shape of your chin and your nose, it can slender up your face, it changes the size of your lips and your cheeks. It can make your eyes bigger or smaller and you can put makeup on yourself and it's all just built into the camera, out the box and it's totally normal and accepted. If we lived in a world where AR glasses are the norm, then people would walk around with their appearance already completely changed. I can already hear you saying that all you would have to do in that case is just take off the glasses, right? But here's an argument someone could make in the future. Why do you want to see me with the glasses off? Do you only want to start a relationship or a friendship with me based on my looks? Which says a lot about you. Who's the bad guy in the situation? The person wearing the digital makeup or the person judging who I am based on my looks outside of how I view myself? Hmm. Now in this case, do we live with glasses on all the time to be better people? Damn. Crazy thought, right? Number two. What would be the point of hiring real sports players to play sports? People already gather to watch people play sports on PlayStation and that's just on a screen. But now imagine PlayStation AR gamers, which would control 3D players on an actual field or an arena. I bet you with that one, I got you like, what the f Number three, viruses. So what would an AR virus look like? I guess you could get the normal plug that eats at your system like any other normal computer or device. But what if people could change the way that you see stuff? They could make you look at a bridge and the AR glasses would make it seem in real time that the bridge is in perfect condition. But the integrity of that bridge is actually so bad, you would slip, fall, destroy the earth and cause a massive black hole. Number last, 
Now, it's pretty obvious that if you've been paying attention, we won't need phones anymore. So with Apple's M1 chips, we practically have computer-fast processing on smaller devices, meaning your glasses could practically do everything your phone can. Imagine a world without phones, bruh. That one still blows my mind still right now. For as long as I've been alive, bruh, we've had cell phones. It's crazy to think that my grandkids could look at the cell phone the same way that I look at your mama. Bitch, I am broke. I ain't gonna trip. I show my Nikes, you asked for the whip. Had to pay rent. Told my landlord, little bitch, I spend all that shit on my trip. Suck on my dick, I bust on your lip. Do that little shit where you bounce on my D. I stepped in this beat with two fake IDs. My name's all I need, like doobie doobie. Smoke on my weed, <coughs> doobie. I'm higher than cannabis seasonal trees. Sip on that lean. Walk.